Well, hello, everyone. Huh? Hello. Oh. I'm Mike. How's it going? Hi, Michael. I'm recording this so that way folks who can't watch it will be able to watch it on YouTube. Hi. But I trust that if you don't want to be on it or on our YouTube channel showing your pet, that you'll let me know so we can edit you out. You know what I'm saying? Can we edit? Aww. Aww. Some of you are very well prepared. Here's the deal. We want to have some fun. We want to hang out. We want to see each other's pets and hear some stories. You each received in an earlier email uh, yeah. hey. some sample questions or talking points if you need them. But what we'll do is we'll just, uh, I'll call a name out. We'll turn the camera over to you. You'll have a few minutes to share about your pet. Um, you'll have a few minutes to share some fun facts or things you like about them, how they make living in the pandemic better or just your life in general better. And if you've got cool, cool tricks, great. If not, don't worry about it. You see next to me are Sugar Ray and Frazier. And Sugar Ray, what do you have to say about this? Welcome to the bird show. Welcome to the bird show, but there are other animals involved too. You know, like dogs, cats, pet rocks maybe? Fine, a show for all pets. A show for all pets is right. Open the cages and let's see. Open the cages and let's see? Well, I think we probably should. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. You heard the bird. So uh, let's get it going. And first up, why don't we have, uh, well, the camera just went to Sharon. I think it's a great place for us to start with Sharon. So... Uh, here's what I'll say too, when you're not sharing, if you could mute yourselves so that way there's no interference with background noise, and then when I call on you, if you can unmute yourselves, or if we're pausing for question and answers, if you can unmute yourselves, things will be much smoother. So Sharon, let me put you on the main screen and let's see you take it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hang on. Wait, or maybe Iram or Aaron hosts? What's going on here? Let her rip, Sharon. This is Gidget. Gidget is 13 and a half years old, and this is what she does best. This is her trick of the day, that needing. And she was adopted um, a rescue. She's a rescue. She's miniature pincher uh, chihuahua mix. And um, Gidget rules the roost, basically. She tells me what to do. I follow her. When we go for a walk, she, we stop outside, she decides which way we're going and then we go. Because if I try to take her the other way, she puts on the brakes and she literally does not move. I can drag her down the street. Mm -hmm. um, one trick is lately because she was, she was very sick for a while. So she's on this food that she absolutely loves. And when she, she knows it's dinner time, which is coming up soon, she actually dances until I put her food down. But she's she's a great dog. She's she's not cuddly. She's not a cuddly, holy dog, but she's a well-behaved dog, except for her barking sometimes. But she's a good girl. And then you see Gidget. And her best favorite thing is a treat. You want a treat? Oh, she's also deaf, so she can't hear anything I say. But she's a good girl. 
So she smelled that treat right away, Sharon. Yeah, because she can, she, and for some strange reason, she can hear if I'm, if I'm undoing a piece of something with cellophane, she hears the cellophane and she, she comes running, but she can't hear me. I may be selective hearing. It sounds pretty selective. <laughs> uh, does anyone have, we'll pause for a moment if anybody's got questions or requests of Sharon and Gidget. She's so cute. So cute. She, she's a funny kind of a puppy. She, she barks, oh, you know what she does do? If somebody comes into the house, she barks at them until they scratch. She does do that. Once they start scratching her, she's quiet. And then when they stop, she hits them with her paw more. Where did you rescue her from? My husband did, actually. Uh, it's Pet, PetSmart. Uh, the Guardian Angels, I think they're called. A long time ago. We got her. She was a year old. She, um, she was a runaway. And um, evidently, she had babies because she's, her, she's got where she, you know, teats, where she would feed them. So she was, she was, she was pregnant before she was even a year old. But that's about, you know, that's about it. That's all we, we don't really know a whole lot about her. This is the famous Gidget we've heard about so much during boxing. Mm -hmm. Who can hear treats even though she's deaf. So that's a talent. <laughs> that may take the talent of the day. Sharon, thank you for showing us Gidget. She's How adorable. About, thank uh, you. Next up, why don't we have Faith and then Carl. Great. Well, um, the spotlight you hear, Faith. There we go. We, um, I see here. Uh, 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 Dolly. Dolly is a rescue. Uh, we rescued her from uh, SPCA about uh, three years ago, and uh, she she is a great doll. She she's very um because she I guess she was a rescue dog, and was living in horrible squalor and, and very very bad situation, and. Uh, and so she, but she's very attached to me. And so it's always nice to have someone care, caring about where you, where you go or if you're home or not. So she, she's very good about that. And uh, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, she, we have the same hairdresser. Uh, you know <laughs> same hairdresser. That's wonderful. She's a great dog. She doesn't like she doesn't like people to come over to our house at all. She uh, just wants to see see him. Um, public, and that's it. She looks like a stuffed animal. I know it's, it's so um, cute. Yeah, and it's the end of the day, so she's just pretty well uh, a mess by this time. But he, he, there she is. There's a good picture of her. She matches so, like, you well. <laughs> I think yeah, yes. yeah, similar colors and she oh. looks like a purebred. Oh, I put him. Yes, he is. She's a we are. Uh, she's a girl, and uh, she was. Uh, if she, I, I don't know how long she'd been in the, in the, in the um the the. Was she in a puppy mill? Yes, yes, she was. She was, uh, she was a rescue. We're not sure how old she was. Uh, the SPCA rescued her. It was a pretty dire environment that she was in. They didn't really tell us a whole lot about her uh, history. They just, uh, they just told us that um, she was rescued with about 50 other dogs out of a uh, out of a house, and uh, that uh, uh, she was. Uh, they thought that she was about five years old, but they weren't really sure. 
and uh, she immediately bonded with faith immediately and nobody else exists as far as Dolly is concerned. <laughs> I don't exist as far as as far as Dolly's concerned. I, if if I left tomorrow, that would be just fine. <laughs> that would be just fine. Well, Faith, thanks for sharing her with us. And yes. uh, I'm sure if people want to find your collective hairdresser, they'll reach out. <laughs> but, uh... I feel like we shouldn't be surprised that she has a big blingy collar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The one that was the in heels last year for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's wonderful. Well, thank you, Faith. And, uh, next up, we've got Carl. And Honey. Honey is our, she's one of our five dogs, and she's a five-eighths Anatolian three-eighths Great Pyrenees mix. And she's sweet and good and brave and strong and beautiful. And I love my honey. So when you call honey, she comes running and not your wife? She comes running. Unless I'm trying to put her, uh, unless I'm trying to put her up and then she comes walking. <laughs> Turn around, honey. Show how pretty she is. How much does she weigh? She weighs about 95, 90, 95. Where she, does she sleep? She sleeps out. Uh, she sleeps outside in the dog run. Is she your favorite dog? I have. Uh, we. No, I have. We have five dogs and they're all, uh, I guess if I had to pick a favorite, I would pick our first Anatolian Great Pyrenees Cross, whose name is Inara. She is noble and virtuous and the guardian of the Northern frontier and she hates desperately to come in a building. She has her, she has her flock of, uh, of our poultry that she guards and she does not, she is miserable if you take her away from her flock. A flock. And so I did not bring her up, up to my office because she would have been miserable. Are your dogs all that big? Uh, we have one rat Terry who's, what does he weigh? 30, 30, 35 pounds. 35 pounds. And Aura weighs about 105. Honey weighs about 90, 95. Mari is a Great Pyrenees, is a full blood Great Pyrenees, and she weighs about 85 or 90. And Sheba is a mutt who showed up on our, at our front drive. Somebody dumped her on us and we kept her. Uh, when she was a puppy, and she's a Heinz 57 mix who who weighs about uh, 65 pounds. I like dogs you don't have to bend over to pet. <laughs> Any so other questions is... for Honey or Carl? How many chickens are in your flock? We have, we got about 40 chickens and a bunch of peafowl. And peacocks. I'm sorry? 
Yeah, peacocks too. Well, peafowl is the term for peahens and peacocks. Peacocks are the males. We're going to have to get together again so we can see the rest of your animals. Yeah, the Carl Animal Parade. Yeah, I want to see all of them. Well, there's cows and there's horses huh. and there's cats and it takes a while to go through the whole ma menagerie. Oh. I smell a field trip. <laughs> Good idea. Yes. Oh, it's a doggy. Well, maybe when the pandemic's over, we can have a field trip, but not anytime soon. <laughs> That's for sure. So this is this is honey, and she some some dogs grin. Honey doesn't grin. She looks kind. Of, she always looks kind of morose. <laughs> but she's really not. She's not sad. How old is she? Her face. Carl, how old is she? She's about. She's. Uh, she's five. Five. She'll be turning six. Did you go Did you go looking to get some a great Pyrenees mix or did you just yes, find Yes, we did. And how come? We, we like the uh, the the flock guardians are breeds are very valuable to us because of our other uh, our other animals especially the peafowl who live out uh, roost in the trees, and so the the chickens we could put up in a could in a uh, chicken house at night and protect them. But the peafowl roost in the trees, and so the the flock guardian breeds are valuable to us, and they love they they really don't want to be. They love to be outside. I, uh, Inara, I'll get you one pretty soon. Inara is miserable. She really gets happy when it breaks 30 degrees. If it's above about 40, she's hot. But if, if you get it down about 25 and maybe a little snow on the ground she's just elated and they're not and the flock guardians are nocturnal they uh they tend to be awake and on guard at night and sleep in the day carl thanks for sharing her and uh yeah. Next up, just looking at the top of the screen here, how about Paige followed by Beth? Paige. Am I up? You sure are. Oh, was that, there Who's you that are. ball of energy? Well, y'all, this is this is this is our dog. Uh. This is this is the usual situation you'll find him right there on the couch. Or on the chair, or on the bed, or everywhere we told him he can't go, he, he's gone. Now he owns every piece of furniture in the house. This is Dutch. We've had Dutch. We got Dutch from a shelter uh, about uh, about ten years ago. So he, he were, uh, at the time he was about three or four, two or three rather. So we're thinking he's about ten to twelve years old. I'm not real sure. He, he he loves everything, but the one thing he, he he hates to be left alone. He must have abandonment issues. He hates to be left alone. We used to leave him alone at the, at the other house. We had a pool, and every time I would go, he would he would attack the pool toy, or the pool uh, sweeper cleaner. He'd pull it out of the ground, pull it out of the pool, and he'd get it across the yard and he'd buy holes and everything. And he he he's so proud of that when we come home and show me what he'd done. <laughs> but. Uh, that was good. Then, then over here, he, he got real mad. At it. I guess we left him alone again. And Janet, my, my wife, had with her 
uh, set of quilts, it's a, it's a kind of nice quilt she's working on. And he just he bit a hole in that. And he bit, he, he bit found one of my best, my favorite guitar straps. He bit the, bit the end of that off so I couldn't use it anymore. Boy, little dog. Yeah. So what else you want to know? He looks ferocious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the, 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 we we bought it, we got it for the boys. The boys were wanting a dog. They said they said, "Dad, what dog were they with their mother?" I guess. And somehow it got to me, and I said, "Okay, well, you show me. You 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 be responsible for it. You feed him and or her, and, and, and uh, provide all, all the necessary things we need. And you guys can have one." Well, they took me down to show me the animal shelter, and uh, uh, he he said he had to, one thing he had to do is he had to pass the boy test. Which means he has, you, know, you can ride him, pull his tail, yank on him, sit on him, whatever. And he, 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 he did all those things. He didn't complain. So, but the, but the one thing he didn't like to do, he left alone. But my, my oldest boy wanted to name him Reptar. We, we didn't know what Reptar was, so we suggested Dutch. Reptar. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there he sits. I see, let's, let's, you you want to come and say hi, Dutch? See, he, he probably won't move. Let's try. Oh, there, there he is, that big old boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Say, Dutch, say hi, Dutch. Hi, Dutch. Hey, Dutch. Yeah, he licking this dog in the West. We call the licking this dog in the West. He licks you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, big on tongue. It's a little tricky, does. Feeding mama bird, baby bird style. Well done, Paige. Yeah, uh, you, you, one of the questions was asked about. How do you manage, how does, how does the dog help manage Parkinson's? He doesn't really help manage it. He helps, uh, helps me keep on my feet. I have to let him out, in and out, in and out of the door all the time, so I'm always having to walk. So that's good. But uh, he's a good doggy. Good girl. Any other questions for Paige? The, 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 the shelter told us it was, a, it was a lab mix. I always tell you it's a lab mix. He's got a lot of pit in him. His jaws, he can chew, he can chew a chew, chew, chew toy up in less than 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> but he's gonna, Paige, so he's Paige does he sing when you play the guitar? Do what? Does he sing when you play the guitar? No, he just tries to if I get in his face to try to lick my, my head. <laughs> He, he, he listens to us you know, doing that ooh and ah stuff, the voice project, but he doesn't really, he is, he just, he, he doesn't know us, he doesn't really try to sing along or anything. And that's it, I guess. Thank you, Paige. You're welcome. Oh. Beth? Okay. You're right. Riley's been. Okay, this Riley here is my grand dog, and she gets to come over and stay with us every now and again. And she is, she's not used to sitting this long. <laughs> she's watching the TV and she's really getting impatient. But she, um, when Paige was mentioning doing the warm ups for Parkinson's voice, one time Riley was, was whining along with me when I was doing the warm up. It was very cute. I wish I'd had a video of it. But anyway, she, she's my son's dog. And he's had her, he rescued her um, about five, four or five years ago. <laughs> and she whines a lot. Um, she wakes us up at like, you know, five in the morning whining like she wants to go out and you just have to tell her quiet and she leaves the room and then she's, then she doesn't whine anymore. But, but she will do a trick. Um, she's very, hey, right, hook them horns, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that was my son. Uh, his wife is uh, a Sooner and he's a Longhorn. So he, that was the first thing he taught the dog. Anyway, 
Riley is, um, she's a pretty good dog. Um, she likes her treats. You can see that. But anyway, it's kind of fun having a dog for a week. The kids are out of town, so we're watching her. And so she got to participate this time. So, hey, Riley, look in the screen. Say hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any questions? Hello, have you had her? Well, it's, it's my son's dog, and they, they've been, they got her before they got married. So they've had her about five years. Five years. Yeah. And she's not too, she's about, I don't, I think she's about 45 or 50 pounds. So she's like the grandparents. Yep. That's exactly right. And so we're getting practice with her for our new grandbaby in February, a real one. <laughs> so your first grandbaby? Yep. All right. Yep, yep. And it's fun having a grand dog because we can give her back. And my house has about an inch of dog hair everywhere. Um, and she's been here like a week. Right, Riley? Oh, see, she's still a very sweet dog. See, say hello. See, I said she, she could be uh, Junior's girlfriend. Yes. She looks, she looks a lot like him. See, maybe maybe you and Junior were um, knew, knew each other in another life, huh, Riley? <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's, that's, I don't have that much to tell you about her. She's just um, a good dog and we enjoy having her for a week. She won't go in the swimming pool. She, she'll, she'll, walk around it but she won't get in it and probably the weirdest thing that she does is when she eats she picks up her food and takes it away for the first bite and then comes back and finishes it in about two seconds mm. so Very nice. thanks beth you're welcome how you're about welcome. uh how about ron ron and then jim See, there's, there's Junior. See? Yeah. Oh, okay. You want another treat? Let me give you this whole bag. You want to eat your dinner? Okay, I'll turn off. I'm sorry, Ty. See if I can get Jack to get him off. Come here, Jack. <clears throat> Come here, Jack. <clears throat> Jack's, uh, Jack is a year and a half old. I-57 with mostly, well, not mostly, with some uh, Labrador. He looks like a Labrador, but I had one of those uh, DNA tests done, and he had his six primary breeds were uh, Blue Healer, Pit Bull, Labrador, Golden Retriever, Australian Shepherd, and Chow Chow. Uh -oh. so he's got a little bit of, he's got a little of everything in him. And uh, he's, when I, when I got him, he had been surrendered down in uh, Hood County at the uh, Granbury um, uh, uh, Dog Center. And he had, he had uh, heartworms. So we've been doing heartworm treatment for the last two and a half months. And tomorrow was his last day of restricted activity. So tomorrow he gets to chase squirrels without any kind of restriction on him at all. And I think he's gonna be real happy about that. He's uh, not very big, he's kind of small for a Labrador. He's about 50 pounds and uh, he really, he's kind of a lap dog. He loves to l sit in your lap, even in the chair, which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice to kind of cuddle with him. Um, he doesn't seem to be very interested at the moment, but uh, he's, been, he's been a good addition to the household. It's nice to, it's not nice to have somebody to, some uh, even a dog to come home to and even buy a new collar for it's kind of fun to have somebody who doesn't put any kind of uh, limitations on on your uh, what you do for them so that's jack yeah you can't see black dogs can you 
hard to see against a black shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, that was the wrong shirt. <laughs> Show us the, your picture of Daisy on the wall. Can you do that? Of day, of day, which one? The one on the tree. Oh, oh yeah. Is yeah. That handy? Oh, I thought it was handy. Daisy was the sweetest dog. <laughs> this was my. This was my last lab. She, she was quite a tree climber. Yeah, she's like a puma. She had a big smile all the time. What a cool oh, picture. Sweet. That's beautiful. She would do anything to catch a squirrel, even climb the tree. <laughs> Jack's probably going to learn how to do that, as crazy as he is about squirrels. He's already jumping half the distance up the fence. But he's a good boy. He gets he gets along with, with Pam's bunch, which is good. We can go over and visit. And uh, Pam's little one gives him a good run around the yard. So that's a lot of fun. I've never heard of a DNA test for an animal. Where did you get that done? Um, here, I'll give you the name. Bob Suffers. Has anyone else heard of that? I, I sure hadn't. I was looking at some the other day and there were some on sale, at least with, I think it was Petco. But yeah, you can buy them at like a regular pet store. I think it's like around $50. It's a hundred bucks. Oh, I and here's the, here's the box that the, all the stuff comes in it. And you just uh, take a swab of the, the dog saliva and put it in a, just, just like you do with a COVID test, put it in a bottle with some solution in it and send it off and it takes about a week or two weeks and they send it back um, Gwen mentioned to me that sometimes if you send it back the second time you don't get the same results so I'm not sure how accurate uh -huh, it is. yeah not really sure how accurate it is but it's uh it's kind of fun it's kind of kind of kind of fun to do Jack, I know Jack really enjoyed knowing where he came from. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's Mr. Jack. Glad you shared him with us, and I'm glad he's finishing his heartworm treatments. Yeah, tomorrow's a big day. Next he's up. Great. He's great. We've got Jim. Hey, hey, everybody. This is, uh, this is, the Airedale Terrier, we have, uh, I was going to introduce Mia, who's the mother of the three Airedale Terriers that we have, and the, but the little one doesn't, won't let me alone, so she's here too. So here's Mia. Mia's six years old, and we got her in Virginia before we moved to Texas, and um, she's a purebred Airedale, and she's also a champion Airedale now because she's yeah. qualified at several dog shows and won awards for her, her um, I guess her, uh, her line, I guess her competition with other Airedales. And my wife is this expert, so, so she would do a much better job of explaining every, everything. But um, Airedale Terriers are really high energy dogs and they love to dig. Um, they, they basically are, uh, were bred to, to hunt out uh, things in the ground, especially, but uh, they're, uh, you have to really, they you have to pay them a lot of attention. They they will get uh, get really busy on their own if you don't. Um, we named Mia after um, the town we used to live in in Japan a long time ago, Miyazaki, and her second puppy, her second, her first litter. Um, we took one of took the male one male from that litter, and his name is Zaki, so we named Mia and Zaki. 
the first two. And then this is Suki, is the youngest, and she's the, she's the second litter. And um, Mia's over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Suki's right here, and Mia's right here. They look they look the same, don't they? <laughs> but uh, oh, cute. They um, so yeah. So Mia has had six two lit two uh, litters, and she's had sixteen puppies. We have one from the first litter, Zaki, who's not with. It. He's at he's away at a boarding training set training uh, academy this this month. So otherwise, I was going to introduce him. And then Suki's from the second litter, and so. Mia's six, Zaki's three, and, and Suki's two. And so, um, but they're a great uh, threesome around the, around the house. They're, they're good guard dogs. If the, one of them senses anything is going on outside, there'll be a bark. One bark out of one dog quickly becomes 100 barks out of all three dogs. <laughs> because one hears the other one and they all start barking. It's like alarms start going off around the house. So no one can sneak up on us. Yeah, um, but you got you got to keep. You can see, I, I got to keep uh, feeding them treats to keep. Through. That's what they learn in dog shows. That you do everything for treats, and so they, if you don't have treats, they don't they, they get bored and wander off. Um, but Mia, it, Mia is the one I was mainly going to introduce. She's a great mom. She's very nurturing. She's good with our granddaughters when they come. Uh, they're, they're, she takes care of them. She shepherds them and guards them, and that's great. And and she can play. At any level um, of energy, sometimes that they're uh, they can knock a lot of things down around the house, chasing each other around when they get really wound up. But the rest of the day, they they tend to just nap. They're um, um, about the, uh, the oh, the, in terms of their, I guess during COVID, every it's great that you have to have the dog to is always. Nothing affects them. They don't know that there's a pandemic going on. They don't know that there's economic worries. They don't know that their job worries. They don't know anything else other than every day is the same day, and they're always just as eager to, to play with you and, uh, and give you attention and have their belly rubbed, and, and uh, that's really a nice constant to have when, uh, I guess, when there's so many things are changing and uncertain every day. And I think that's true of everybody, everybody's Great. pets, you know, it's across the board. So especially during this, Great this point. time. Um, what else about Mia? Mia, Suki ran off now. So now Mia, you get the whole stage to yourself. Good. So let's see. Is there, is there a lot of grooming involved with oh, those dogs? Good point, Pam. Yes, there is. Especially if you're going to show them because their, uh, their fur uh, get, can get really really thick and they don't shed really that much a little bit but but you do have to uh, constantly pull out the um, the hair overgrowth and the, and the undercoat so it, it looks it looks right for uh, the show when you, the colors uh, look right and the, and, the, and the grooming looks good so it takes it takes a fair amount of attention to uh, to manage the the the, uh, the coat especially if you, if you don't need to show them or anything then they'll get they'll become more woolly looking but uh, we keep ours pretty well trimmed and like I said before they do love to dig so our backyard is all either concrete rock or astroturf <laughs> so, that way they can run around and chase each other and, and they don't have they don't come in ready as good much but if you have an airdale and you have uh, a lot of dirt and mud then they, you'll constantly have to wash them when they come in but they're very lovable and they're uh, great companions. They're super smart. In fact, they're too smart. They'll, they'll you can't fool them and they'll figure things out no matter what. You probably you can't figure out how to jump over, knock it down. You have a package you don't want them to find, they will find it. Um, oh, yeah. Any other questions about the Miyazaki and Suki? It couldn't be cuter. They're just adorable. <laughs> she's found herself. This <laughs> is just, just in the screen. Okay. Got excited with the. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, she's, you can tell the little one, the, the, the girl, the youngest, Suki's wearing a diaper right now. So she's she's uh, that time of the month. So we have to keep keep an eye on her, because we have all they're all intact uh, animals. So for my again, it's Colleen's. Uh, 
hobby from the start was to raise and show and breed the uh, the Airedales, and she's done a great job of that. And uh, she, in fact, she would have all sixteen puppies if she if she, huh. if she could. Uh, I just kind of like stopping at three, but uh, for now. <laughs> But they're great, great companions, great dogs, and um, especially during the COVID year, I think is uh, any dog, especially I think, are, are really great to have for your own mental health. Do they go to Colorado with you? Yeah, they, they we'll put them in the back of the car, and when we drive up there, and then they'll spend time. Uh, yeah, the Bacondo. <laughs> Auto and uh, and they love to go out and hike in the in the in the hills and meet other dogs and people. So um, we'll usually take just one when we go to Colorado. Well, thank you, Jim. Thanks for the chance to introduce them. Good to get to know the Airedale. Nephew who lives in Miyazaki, Jim. So far, we've had a bunch of mixed Sorry. breeds. I have a nephew who lives in Miyazaki. Oh, really? Wow. With his wife and three kids. And um, he, he's got a ukulele group there. You can look him up on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. That is a small world. Oh. That's, that's a far off corner of the world. It's, it's back in southwestern rural Japan. I mean, mostly Miyazaki is sort of a medium city, but by Japan standards. That's very old style, traditional Japan. Hey, I'll remember your dog's name. That is cool. Yeah. Good. Well, next up on the screen, I see Aaron and Annabelle. So let's get them loaded up here. Hey, guys. So this is what Annabelle loves to do, huh. is just lay under a blanket all day if she could. Um, she is, I think, a Great Dane mix. She's supposed to be just, I was told she's just a Great Dane, and her parents are both like 100 and like 125 pounds, and she came out to be 70 pounds. So she's a little bitty Great Dane. Um... She loves napping. She loves going on walks. Um, she's, walking is really one of her favorite things, which is nice because it makes me get up on days that I don't feel like doing much. Um, but so she loves going on walks. And when she gets back, she usually gets the zoomies. So if your dog does that thing where they like scramble back and forth and go crazy, she always does it after a walk when she's you think she'd be low on energy, that's when she has the most. Um, yeah, so she's right now just snuggled in and she will stay there as long as I let her. <laughs> also do, uh, I wanna show you some of her tricks. Um, but before I do, I also want to introduce my roommate dog, Toby, because several of you have heard me talk about Toby. He's a funny little guy Aww. and they're best friends. Um, they snuggle together and it's really, really cute. I'll show you the picture. Annabelle, I'm gonna see if she'll do some picture treats. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Very lazy dogs. Come here. So she doesn't do anything very functional, uh, but she does cute things. So she doesn't like to sit. She'll you never it. see her just sitting and about hey. So she's always really slow to sit down. Lay down. So she knows a little hop and she'll go through nope, hey, legs. And about no. Like, it's all right now, Toby's throwing Toby also wants to treat. Toby's doing all the commands. <laughs> trying. Oh, there's the day. Uh, um, one we caught her a while back. Yeah. So bow, and he bowed down to her. There you go. Toby, let's be double. High five. High five. No, high five. 
There you go. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites of Annabelle's is her food bowl. I'll ask her where does it go, and so she'll point to where she wants to set the treat or the food bowl. So he's not giving me for this. Where's it go? So she, I don't know if you guys, nah, you can, hey, yeah. so. <laughs> he's pointing like, no, hey, go. And where's it go? So she'll point to where she wants the treat, and that's one of my favorites that she does. So I'll keep things. Uh, she comes to about hip height. She's pretty small, like I said, for a great day. She's got a nice intimidating bark, but she's one of the most gentle creatures you will ever meet. Uh, hey, stop. So, if you guys have ever been in the yoga class when she's the in-person yoga class, you probably at some point had her just stand over your face and <laughs> stare at you because she doesn't really give kisses. So, she'll just stare at you. Any uh, questions for Annabelle? Working? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How old are the dogs? Oh, she is. She just turned five. She's got these nice white eyebrows growing in that you can yeah. see. Um, and Toby is almost two years old. You can hear him making some funny noises. He's a duck pulling retriever, and sometimes he makes weird screaming sounds. So he might get that way here in a second if you hear that. So. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Good job. I just want to say that it was beautiful to have her in the yoga class. And I oh. remember when I was in Downward Dog and she was very close to me. It was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. She loves doing yoga with me. <laughs> Tell me what? How about next up? Uh, I see Gwen. And after that, uh, Colette. We got two more in front of us. At least. Let's see here. Okay. Hey there, Gwen. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good. I had three dogs. So, but I'm going to show you the first one. This little one right here, his name is Tugboat. He's a Wheaton Terrier, and anybody that knows anything about Wheaton Terriers knows that they're a lot bigger than this guy. Um, I got him from Palm Valley Rescue. It's a group that works in the Rio Grande Valley. They bought a bus and they fill up this bus as often as they can and bring their dogs to get them out of the Rio Grande. It's a 14-hour ride. By the time Tugboat got here, he was pretty sick. So we had to separate him from, from the other dogs. And uh, finally, he kept getting sicker. So we finally brought him upstairs to take care of him. He wouldn't eat, he wouldn't drink. We started feeding him. He was scheduled to fly to New York. And, almost every weekend, right? Mm -hmm. And the woman that runs the nonprofit would say, is, is Tugbo ready to fly yet? And we'll say, no, he's still really sick. And, and he was. And then after a few weeks of taking care of him, we had to lie because he wasn't sick anymore and we weren't gonna let him go to New York. <laughs> so we're what you call a foster failure. We ended up keeping Tugbo. <laughs> He's great. He's got his own language. He's got a million different parts. And so, and then now you're seeing the rear end of Darby. Darby Turner. Darby is a great Pyrenees um, Bernice Mountain Dog mix. She's clipped short because, like everybody said, they get pretty hot. And um, when I wrote a couple of notes because there's some things I really wanted to talk about. She's a European, a lot of European herding dogs have been really, really popular in the Southwest because it's so easy to 
great gurneys just naturally will guard your cattle, your sheep, your chickens, just naturally. So, but, so a lot of people started buying Great Pyrenees, but they weren't taking care of them. It's too hot for them in the summer. They're getting worse. And so your rescue places are filled with Great Pyrenees mixes. But she's been great. The reason I got Darby is because um, I was researching dogs with helping people with Parkinson's disease. And I started going to all these brace and mobility sites. And there is a in um, Darby is going to be almost two years old um, in the next few months. You can't teach a dog the brace command until they're two, until they're fully grown. But the brace command is meant to, if you have no piece of furniture or no way to get yourself up, you can teach your dog to brace. They can brace standing and they can brace seating. And you are taught how to grab them between their shoulders, which is the strongest part about a dog. You don't grab them by the handle. You don't grab them by the um, by the collar. You don't. You you learn how to brace. And so I'm looking forward to doing that to see if that can. It'll help you get up off the ground, or it'll help you get down to the ground if you need to. So this is Darby. She's been absolutely great. Is there anything else I need to say about her? Um. See if I have her name. Oh. No, that's okay. So anyway, this is Darby. We have Hi, another dog. Uh, you've got somebody with you there who I understand may be uh, celebrating today. Is that right? Uh, he just walked away, but yes, he is. He's the guy that made the poster for this. This is my husband, Richard. Well, when Richard gets back, since he's part of the brain trust behind figuring out this whole pet show and tell, and since today's his birthday, perhaps we could sing happy birthday to him <laughs> in the, really, a, really. In the yeah, asynchronous yeah. way that, uh, that, that Zoom allows, which will be hilarious, a streaking cacophony of noise, but it'll be a lot of fun. Well, uh, it'll be a surprise when you get there. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, if you can unmute yourselves, everybody. Let's all unmute. And uh, on the count of three, perhaps, we can unmute and we can say, hey, uh, hey, Richard, we, we heard a rumor that you're going to feel a little bit like it's not the pandemic. <laughs> you're going to feel a little bit like you're at TGI Fridays getting surrounded by servers or something. <laughs> we heard it's your birthday, man. And we're going to sing happy birthday to you on the count of three. One. Two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Thank you, everyone. That was so cool. Um, and next up, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. They have one more. Oh, dog. there's another another dog snuck in. I was so excited about the birthday. Sorry. Right, are you ready for this one? This yeah. dog is named The Jerry. I'm on mute. We rescued him. But Bloody let me take Jerry? my the urban the urban dictionary says a jerry is a great character thoughtful and fun to be around he does have anger issues and can get a little aggressive when provoked he's funny and he's a terrible liar but he can't help it he can act quite dense but he is so very nosy it's overwhelming he treats you like you're the only person in the world and can be really affectionate if he's not too busy that's how we got his name. That's exactly him. He's a corgi poo, so he's a burrowing, chasing. He's he's the worst, worst dog in the world. He's so bad. He's so mischievous, and he's all personality. He's hilarious. Oh, those are ears. Yeah. Those are incredible ears. You yeah. think he'd be a good listener? <laughs> <laughs> 
Dennis, look at these dogs. But he's terrible. Is that, is that right? I thought that was Dennis. Right. Oops. That's it for our crew. Well, thank you. And uh, that means coming up next, we've got Colette. It's Colette and Tusi. He's almost two years old. And all of my cats, when I have them, are my favorite. And each one gets better and better. They're just like the old one, but a little different. And he is the most social, the most playful, definitely the most athletic kitty I have ever had. He's, um, he kind of has a little rush blue, certainly for his coat, but his body is kind of a Siamese and he likes to climb. He likes to go up and he'll be balancing in that chair now. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> um, Hi, baby. He, uh, I bought him all kinds of toys. He didn't cotton to any of them. Then our friend Ruth, I think her last name is Jensen from yoga, gave him her Stanley's toys. It was this one that opened the door to fetch. And the kitty will bring it back to me and I will throw it and he'll bring it back to me sometimes. So then I finally learned to buy other toys. I think he is wonderful because he's attentive. He likes both of us. He's responsive to food, which makes it easy to have him uh, do things up to you. Not so easy to teach him not to climb on the window blinds. He treats them like jungle gyms. <laughs> but I have hope. He's just <laughs> kitty. I think he's going to learn. And, I, up to him. and he is smooth and soft. He sleeps with me. He sleeps with us, but he does really kind of follow me around. So if I look around, he's usually in my room, wherever I am, in the corner. He may not be exactly on my feet, but he's pretty nearby usually. And we took him in an RV this year, and he was a very good um, traveler. And we might travel with him again. And that's why he's got a harness on with a little clip for a leash, just so he gets used to it. We're practicing. Mm -hmm. He climbs up the refrigerator. He will climb up of closet doors. Um, he jumps from the floor to my shoulder. Sometimes I think he does it on command, but mostly he just does it. And if I bend over <laughs> to pick something up, especially in the closet where it's carpeted, he jumps on my back. I, that can be a little exciting. Does anyone have any questions? I wish you could feel him. He is so soft. He looks soft. Very pretty. Beautiful. Very beautiful. And he harness. Pardon? What kind of harness is it? Well, I'll show you. It cool I need one for my big cat. That's cool. uh, I got cool. it. Let's see. It's better than the first one I ordered, so I definitely recommend this one over the first one. I remember when you got the cat, this one. Remember yeah, we rescued him? We rescued him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he pretended that he was a big purrer. -er. When we met him, he purred. Well, he still purrs, but not near as much as other cats I've had. Okay, this harness is called rabbit goo. Or maybe rabbit go. So it's R-A-B-B. I T G O O. Thank you. And I, I'm not sure what size this is, but he's 11 pounds. 
Okay. Have you tried walking him yet? Yeah, but not often enough to say I've had good luck. I certainly have not had bad luck, but I haven't done it enough for him to really um, have had much experience. I can just never, I've never been able to get a cat on a, a leash or harness to walk. I uh, good luck. <laughs> one. He um, he's more trainable. He really is. I I tell him things as we go around. I'll tell him to get down or whatever, and he really seems to know. And I I just kind of tell him and walk away, and then he'll leave and follow me. So he's fun. Well, with the first cat of the day, thank you, Colette. You're welcome. He was glad to be here. <laughs> he thinks of himself as a star. <laughs> he certainly is. And next up, we've got Linda, then Iram. Uh, all right, Linda. All right, all right. There you are. Oh, I'll have to drag one of the cats over, but I'll tell you about all of them to begin with. I'm so glad somebody else had a cat on the program. Um, when I filled out the form, everybody had, you know, one dog, one cat, one cat, one dog, one dog, one dog, one. Once we had three dogs, one dog, one dog, and I put under mine many cats. And um, and then the next column over said their names. So their names are Bailey, who's a male, Cupcake, Creamy, Cinnamon, Goldfish, huh. and um, I've just left out somebody. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, that's it. And then uh, I have and Chimney, and huh. I, all of my cats have always been rescues, and they're rescues because they appear on my back patio. And uh, I can't get near them. They're hungry. I put food out. This may go on for three months or six months. I can't get near them. Finally, someone will come up, rub my leg. I reach down and pet them and say, okay, come on inside. And then I bring them inside. So uh, all of my cats have happened that way. Five years ago, about October, a mother cat appeared on my patio nursing kittens, four kittens. Now who throws a mother cat out in the alley? And when they're, you know, she's got kittens. Um, and it was starting to get cold. And then it got colder. And so I, uh, by that time, she was no longer nursing the kittens. They were running around the yard. And so I brought all the kittens inside because it was really very cold that night. And I left the mother outside. Well, at some point later, I brought mom in too. So I have a family. I have a mom and four of her kittens. And... Um, and then and they're all very well behaved and everything except this, the, there are three girls and then there was a boy kitten and uh, one night I'm sound asleep about four in the morning and I hear this horrible racket and I go running down the hall and out into the dining room and I have a, a chandelier in the dining room that's kind of hanging glass pieces and Chimney was had been up on top of the kitty condo and decided to jump over on top of the chandelier in the middle of the night. Ooh. So he was sitting there looking very guilty, and I said, no, no, you know, and so I thought, well, he wouldn't do that again because it was so loud and it scared him. About a week or two later, same thing, middle of the night, <laughs> I hear all this noise, and I go out, there's Chimney, you know, at the bottom of the cat kitty condo again. I say, Chimney, I love you very much, but you're now going to become an outside kitty, and I put him outside. <laughs> So he is kind of an indoor, outdoor cat. He comes in every night. I invite him in. He comes in, sits in my lap. And uh, he likes to be outside. And he's a, like a Russian blue uh, of sorts, you know. I think more of that breed than anything else. And, you know, gorgeous, handsome guy. And uh, my cats are always around. And I come home and I sit down. And I have immediately have a cat on my lap purring, always purring. And then that one gets off and another one comes, gets on my lap. It's like revolving on my lap at all times. And they're just wonderful. And, they're, and uh, I always, I'm always smiling. I'm always laughing at something silly they've, they're doing. 
And I wake up in the morning and I have one to four cats, two, three on the bed. I always wake up with a smile in the morning, not a laughing because they're doing something silly. And that starts off my day. And uh, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have my pets. Um, and the, the two that are outside now are uh, uh, Harris, who I uh, rescued, I guess, from a friend of mine had, was feeding a number of feral cats and she moved, she lost her house. And she was so worried about what to do with the cats. I walked six of them down the alley, putting the food bowls about a foot or two apart, you know, until I got from four houses down, got them down into my backyard. And uh, the only remaining one now is Harris. And he's a, a gold cat and he's wonderful. I get to pet him every night and put food out for uh, Chimney and Harris. And uh, then I have possums that come into the yard too. And uh, I think they're cute. Most people don't, but I think they're adorable. And uh, so that's kind of my menagerie, I guess, um, that I take care of. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I've, I have, ca have had cats since I was about, I don't know, seven or eight years old, I think. And uh, most of my life I've had cats and I uh, don't know what I do without them. And don't call me a crazy cat lady. <laughs> please. <laughs> Any questions? You want to see somebody? I'll get Bailey. I, I want to see one of the cats. Which one usually runs in front of the screen during chair yoga? Huh? Ready. Ready. Plush. Look up. Look. Watch the camera. See? Hi. That's the oldest one. He's 12 or 13. And um, and then I have one more that uh, is in the office here. Let me stop snagging my shirt here. Here we go. Uh, Robin, who's a black and white kitty, and she's up on the kitty condo now. Let's see if I can aim the camera up there where she is. Yep, there she is. Did I get it right? Yeah. Oh. There she is. Trying to see her behind the lamp. Uh, a foster. This woman was going to take her down, turn her into the Dallas Animal Services. She was extremely shy. You couldn't touch her. You couldn't pick her up. And I knew that she would be uh, euthanized. That there, she would. Nobody would adopt her because she wouldn't. She'd be trembling in the back of a cage and you know, just scared to death. And so I took her in and the woman was supposed to come back and get her in a couple of months. And that was two years ago. <laughs> so um, I don't know that you call it a failed foster, but uh, failed on the woman's part. And she missed out because Robin's, she's still scared of, she's scared of the other cats, which is why they're not all in the room here. And, uh, uh, but anyway, she's, she's coming along slowly, getting friendlier and you know, so anyway, that's my menagerie of cats. Linda, which cat usually runs in front of your screen during chair yoga? <laughs> oh, that's that's Robin <laughs> with the tail going back and forth. Yeah, that, yeah, that's Robin, <laughs> the one that stays in the office. Uh, Robin's the yogi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Linda. Yeah, you are, uh, yeah, thank you. How about next up, Iram, and then Pam. Hey guys, so uh, <laughs> a bunch of treats that uh, are running out. So we'll start with my friend's cat, Caroline's cat. Uh, this is Crystal. She hates the sweater. <laughs> um, Don't blame him. He looks very stylish. Uh, she is just a regular domestic short hair. She likes to be held like that. Not right now, though. Um, she is really, really sweet. She likes to cuddle up on a human being, but she hates other cats. Uh, she likes to, uh, scratch a lot of things that should not be scratched. Um, what else? She likes to eat but sometimes that food doesn't stay down. 
So uh, cleanup duty is uh, then called for. Um, and she sheds a lot. She does not like my cat, which is AJ. This is AJ. He's a nice little bow tie. He's a really big cat. Oh, okay. How okay. oh, oh, heavy? He's about 15 pounds. Whoa! So he's a thick boy. He's a very disrespectful boy. Uh, he likes to open up cabinet doors. He recently learned how to open up the front door, like how you get in and out of the house. Uh, he, what else does he like to do? He likes to cuddle, but from far away. So he'll sit about a foot or two away from you. Uh, basically saying, I love you, human, but not that much. Um, but that's okay, you know, because cats, cats are like that. It's fine. He doesn't shed a lot. He's super soft. Um, right now he's pawing me because he wants treats. And I'm trying to get him to come up. Come here. Come on. Uh, his nickname is El Bobo, which is a clown because he's crazy. Um, <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to see if a trick works here. If, if it's not a it's not a crazy come here look treats your favorite you will like paw at it and try to grab it gotta grab it no no <laughs> no or he can knock over the, the the treats let's let's try that you want some treats you want some treats yes you do no. <laughs> come on grab it Grab it, come on. Yeah, come on, come on, do it, do it now, please. Do it now, come on. You want it, you want to do it. Do it for the prize. Okay, so he's not gonna do it. <laughs> and that's okay, because he's a cat and he can basically do whatever he wants now he's running away. Um, I love him so much, he makes me so happy every time I come home. Yeah, he's the first one to run downstairs and greet me and, he yells at me a lot because he's hungry. So I don't know if it's because he loves me or if it's because he's hungry. So uh, gotta figure that out. Yeah. Any questions? He's beautiful. He's a big boy. AJ, come here. Come here. Come here right now. Come here. <laughs> I don't think he yells at Come here. He follows commands well. <laughs> well, thank you, Iram. Uh, who's next? We got Pam. Oh, yes. Um, oh, okay. I have, we have three dogs. And um, Gwen, are you proud of me? Are you still there? This is Heidi, darling. She's a um, rescue. Look at the camera, Heidi. Look. She's a rescue that um, she came from Mineral Wells, Texas, and they found her in a cemetery. Oh my! And she she went to the the local rescue there in Mineral Wells and was not adopted because she's not very friendly. And it turns out her eyesight is terrible. I I ended up I took her to the specialist, the uh, uh, dog eye doctor, and they said that she has um, blind spots. And I think she's pretty much to legally blind. She, she, um, right. she um, like when I go to give her a treat, she'll, she can't tell the difference between my fingers and the, the little treat. She oh. has to nibble everything and then she'll find the, the right spot but her um Ew. she's afraid of people she, she, can't tell. she doesn't mind being held but i can't it's really hard to catch her or when you approach her she takes off so it's um she's she's um a challenge um my first goal it took me um i've had her for three months i think she's a couple years old. 
I've had her for three months and it took me a month almost to get her to wag her tail. And then uh, my next goal was to get her to bark and we've gotten a couple good barks out of her. And she, she won't tolerate a leash. If, if you put her on a leash right now, she flies around like she's a kite. I mean, she's just petrified of it. So um, it's, it's a long road to get her acclimated to um, just being a dog. We don't know what trauma she's been through. We think at first we thought she was a puppy mill mama and never been out of a cage really. But it's hard to say. But I do know that she does have joy in her life now. She um, loves food. <laughs> I, I was telling my mother-in-law that, you know, we, she finally had an interest in something in food and she wasn't that impressed with that accomplishment. But <laughs> I think it's a good thing. So anyway, she's, she's really um, cute. And, and I, I can't wait to get her to be a more um, affectionate. She's doing real well right now, though. Looks all good. All right. And then this is Gypsy. Gypsy is a um, miniature dachshund. She's about 15 pounds, so she's sort of a, in between a miniature and a standard, which makes her a tweeny. Are you a tweeny weeny? She, um, she's the smartest dachshund we've ever had, um, which isn't saying a whole lot. She um, loves squirrel hunting. Squirrel. She, um, in fact, if I could get Heidi Darlin to, to um, be attracted to squirrels, that would be a big uh, accomplishment. Um, Gypsy is, she sleeps with me. She's a good bed warmer uh, under the covers. The only problem is she sleeps um, east west instead of north south. <laughs> so, so if I roll over, I have to do a big. It's she takes up the whole bed. <laughs> Don't do it. look at you. She um. She's a good dog. Dachshunds are very protective and loyal. She um, she's a good guard dog. In fact, I think she thinks she's a. Here's her Doberman impression. Wait, oh, hold on, Gypsy. There's her Doberman impression. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Aw. So, um, <laughs> loves her belly rubbed. Don't you? That's about it. Oh, we have, we do have another dog. She's, um, he is a black Labrador retriever. He's actually an AKC Master National Hunter Retriever Champion. And he... He right now is duck hunting. He's a working dog who actually has a job. He's a um, re retriever at a um, hunting lodge in Palestine, Texas. And my husband's a guide there. So um, that's where they are now, the opening of duck season. And um, they're having fun. A couple of weeks ago, they uh, Rudy is his name. Rudy and Woody, my husband, went to South Dakota pheasant hunting, and um, Rudy retrieved, I don't know how many pheasants, but that's that's what he lives for, and um, so he and he's, uh, they love it. He's got a purpose. Too bad he doesn't make money doing that, but that's okay. 
So that's it. We've got the got the variety here. I love know. the Doberman impression, Pam. I love it. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Heidi, can you be a Doberman? Oop, maybe not. No, she's had it. Heidi, Heidi, darling, my, she's a, she's a little bigger than a dachshund. I think she might have some corgi in her. She's she's real stocky. Um, it's funny because she, when she gets into her little bed, she literally jumps up and over into it. You wouldn't think she'd be very nimble or um, spry like that, but look at her looking around. Want a treat? There you go. I want to put her down. Pam. Do you have questions for Pam? I have one. For rescuing the dog. What's that? I said thank you for rescuing that dog from the, that was in the center. Yeah, another foster fail because she um, started. I, she started out as a foster with me, but we quickly came to realize that she wasn't very adoptable, just because she's so afraid of people. Yeah. So I'm um, coming. So she's here with me, and she's staying here. Good for you. I yeah. think she'll, uh, she'll have a good life. Oh, for sure. Well, let's see. Next up, we've got uh, Yolanda's got someone or something with her. Uh, Yolanda. <laughs> let's take a look at who this is, huh? Uh, and I think your sound is muted. No, it's not. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I didn't register, but because my my Ruby doll, she she decided to not do the show. You know, when you get to sixty years old, when you're a senior, sometimes you say no, 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 and she's that in that stage. But so I. <laughs> When I saw the uh, the beautiful cats and dogs, I said, no, but I have more pets. So this is one. I rescued this from my son when my son went to college. <laughs> <laughs> one. So I do my, my, my own show, you know. My, uh, my name is Kelly, and, <laughs> and I love Yolanda, and I now I'm going to introduce you, ah, well, by the way, with the Parkinson thing, you know, I, I shake, I shake, I shake, and it's really good for me, so that's so cool. He has a puppet. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to, to uh, my other friend, just a second. I'm going to disconnect something for me. Oh, here it is. This is Doki, my friend. He, he sits close to my bed and uh, he keeps me company sometimes when my husband is not at home, he's traveling. So that's that's my other friend, and let me see if I can introduce you to Ruby Dog, Ruby Russell. Mm -hmm. To see. Uh. Ruby, it's showtime. Okay, looks like oh, here it's, it's kind of difficult for me, but anyway. 
Oh. <laughs> There's Ruby. Ruby doll. Ruby, come on. Up up, it's show time. See? <laughs> this is uh okay. Can you see her? No. Yeah, we saw her. Okay. Yes, she's on strike. She's doing a protest. <laughs> yes, but uh, Ruby is a golden retriever. Okay. Okay. Uh, she speaks Spanish and English. Golden retriever Labrador. When she w she w joined the family when my son was 10 years old, my son just had his birthday on Thanksgiving. He's 23, so Ruby Russell is a senior. Um, but uh, she used to do, like my husband says, circus shows with me, but not at the circus, but in the backyard, of course. Uh, we run with the old kind of jumping, etc. And she, we used to meditate. She had her share, and I had my share. But now, since she's a senior, she she stopped the share meditation, and now she is doing uh, walking meditation. During this stage of my Parkinson, she's an inspiration because uh, she has problems with her legs, the back leg. And I have problems with one of my legs during my dystonias. So sometimes I go to the, the floor with pain. And then she's right there with me with her legs all eh. And then we look at each other in the floor. And then she look at me. She cares about me. And then she just relaxed. So I said, oh, that's the solution. OK. So I start relaxing, relaxing, and relaxing. And then we got it. We stand up and we go walking. That's my Ruby dog. During the pandemic, we talk a lot. I'm not lonely. I blame her for everything that happened at the house. If somebody drinks the milk and my husband asks, who drinks the milk? Ruby dog. If somebody made a mess in the kitchen and my husband asks, What's happening here? So that's my friend. She's a lady and she's a great dog. Thank you for the opportunity to share Ruby and my other friends. And my last friend is... <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. That's wonderful. Bill's out there somewhere, and Bill is going to, he's got uh, Lena. Then maybe we get to meet Lena. Yeah, Oh, here we go. Let me get you on the main screen here, Bill. And let's see, I think your Look at the camera. sound is muted. Let me see you. Look at me, let me see you. All right. Oh, I think it's muted. We still don't hear you. Sorry, Bill. Is that? There we go. Okay. Lena is a 16-year-old Chihuahua who started, if not as Lena, but as Pee, Pee Lena, with an emphasis on Pee Pee. <laughs> 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 you least expected it. Uh, thankfully, she graduated to become Lena, and um, has been a great dog. She really has. Lately, her bladder is not quite the same as it used to be. So she's so, pee, -pee again. <laughs> uh, 
but we're very grateful to Costco and Peepee Pads <laughs> and cooperating with those. Um, she's been a great dog for 16 years. We've kind of grown older together. We've grown fatter together. We've grown hard of hearing together. And we both walk a little kind of wonky at this point, but she's been a good dog. She used to do tricks. She used to um, roll over. She used to crawl on her belly like a reptile, but she won't do it anymore. She said tricks are for kids, but she does have a special talent. She tells time. Lena tells time. It's amazing. She knows at four o'clock it's feeding time. And within minutes four o'clock, she will come and start the stare down. First will be the stare down, and then it'll be the low moan, and then it'll be a bark. It's like, come on, it's it's four o'clock and it's time to eat. Um, when daylight savings time comes, it's amazing. She acclimates herself to that immediately. So it's it's quite quite um, impressive. Um, yeah, her other feet is that she can tell when the, when the postman or postman is in a hundred, a hundred paces of the house. I don't know how she does it. I don't know if it's sound or smell or being alerted by other dogs, but she's been very protective. She gives, a, she gives every kind of mailman hell. And um, that's Lena, that's Lena girl. She had a brother. Any questions? Look at that face. Oh. Oh, yeah, cute. Her brother. Yeah, we used to have her brother as well. We we um lost him about a year ago. That was Tito. And I think sometimes she still looks for him. I'm not sure. But yeah, she's been a good dog. Well, hopefully she eats at four PM, right? Not four AM. 4 p.m. <laughs> she's pissed. She's, she's really good because I think that was the only way I was going to keep her in, in check over here. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Bill. Thanks, Lena. Formerly known as PP Lena. Uh, <laughs> Next up, I think uh, Sherry has something lined up for us. Hello. So sorry, we're having some technical issues. Oh, uh, no problem. Okay, we're gonna leave this in. Okay. Let's see if we can fix this. Hold on. Mm. All right. Can you hear us? They can hear us. Can you hear us? Oh yeah. This is our dog, Honey Dog. Wait a second. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. This is our dog, Honey Dog, and she, we think she's about 11 or 12. Um, she's an American Bulldog Pointer Mix, and we got her as a rescue when I was not even one year old. Um, I'm eight, so we've had her for seven years. Yeah, eight years. Or yeah, so, yeah, eight. Okay. Um, and she, oh, and she's oh, my grand dog. Honey, up. And she's the best granddaughter ever, even though Beth is pretty special. Well, right now we're lying down, and I'm pet sitting a dog, so this is Monty. Can you see this There's it? another one. This is one she's pet sitting. This is Monty. 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 Ah, yeah, come on. There you go. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> she's my favorite dog in the whole world. She's time she likes to spend time at Nana's when we're away, and um, every night, if you go looking for her, the only room you'll find her in is my room. <laughs> she, she loves to be my roommate. She, she's just a sweet girl. So, um, did you say her breed? Yeah. 
Nice. Okay, so we've been kind of working on this. It's a trick, so I'll tell her, um, I'll see how long I can get her to keep her head up with the tree down her nose. Up, up, up. Okay, down. And then she drops <laughs> it on the ground. Yeah. I'm not sure she'll sit in this squeezed up area, but. <laughs> she might. Let's try. How great is this? Okay. Is it? Good girl. Oops. We can't hear you guys very much. That's honey chewing. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> And that's all. Any questions? Who's that in the background? Who's that in the background? Monty. The Monty. other dog? Yeah. I'm pet sitting this little guy. Yeah. What's his breed? He's a rescue. Rescue. Yeah. He's allowed on the couch, but honey's not because she's shit. No, she's bigger. And yeah, she's bigger. Ollie. I don't oh, really hear them. Say hi. Okay. Any questions? Well, thank you for showing us Honey's new trick. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we're showing us uh, your training skills. I love it. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, let's see Put here. I uh, I know we've got some other folks who are on here with us. And I think Bob is somewhere on here with Sadie, but I'm not sure he might have dropped off too. You never know. Well, let me throw this out there. Is there anybody here who's with us that hasn't gotten to share that has a pet that they want to share? or a pet they don't want to share, but they're going to anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, this, since we're wrapping up, we need to say a few things here. Thing number one, everyone who participated today, courtesy of our friends Richard and Gwen, uh, and their connections through their wonderful dog care facility, Downtown Dog Dallas, they, uh, they found a way to get us some cool prizes. And those prizes just arrived here at the gym earlier today. So if you participated and you want uh, a cool prize, let me start my camera here and show you one. You're eligible for a free, wonderful pro wrestling squeaky toy, dog or cat toy. They're also Stone Cold Steve Austin soft uh, cloth toys. And for the cat folks, we've even got some balls um, that the cats would like. So, George Clay Jr. Thank you for making that happen. Thank you for showing up and showing us your pets. Um, hey, Mike, did possible, we miss you? Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? Did we miss you talking about Junior? Oh no, I figure I talk about Junior all the time, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, let's do a quick. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen him in some of his famous work like boxing class t-shirts. Uh, you've seen his work uh, streaking behind the scenes at Tai Chi class. I present to you in his newish red hooded sweatshirt, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Junior is a rescue. He's a boxer mixed with I don't know what. And he's about 45 pounds of wonder. He's, I think, eight. I got him at the end of August. Um, or no, I think he's nine. I got him eight years ago. And he's just been the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. And Junior hates the cold weather, just like me. 
and he curls up under the blanket with me and he's sweet to all people unless you deliver packages to the gym like a mail carrier or an Amazon delivery person. He also is sweet unless you are a, another dog or cat <laughs> or a bike. He wants to attack all of those things. And he somehow passed obedience school. Miracles happen. So that's, that's all we've got. Um, he even walked away in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. I'm stunned. <laughs> but, uh, I wasn't sure how long this would take. I appreciate everybody sticking on here and hanging out. Uh, I appreciate everybody being brave enough to give us a little window into your world and <clears throat> share your, your pets with us. And uh, with that, I'll say, uh, if you want to organize pickup for your prizes we'd love to get them to you so shoot me an email and uh now that it's 5 39 and it's pitch black and maybe midnight i'm not sure feels like it uh i'll say we should shut down for the evening and rest up for a big day of boxing and tai chi tomorrow um does anyone have any parting words it's been great fun yeah, really it. Well, good job. It really has been fun. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you all. This is really cool. I appreciate everybody. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye buddy. See you tomorrow. Guys, thank you.